What's up, all you car maniacs out there? This is Carcamo, the forger of pain. And I just have to say, that was a kick-ass press conference by PlayStation here at E3 2016. Everything was dark, and you heard this Gregorians. Gregorians, if you don't know, is those uh, people singing like, Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I suck, but it was epic, and I knew, my ears knew from the moment I heard that tune that it was God of War. And guess what? It was God of War 4. But I loved the intro. It was this kid, and uh, suddenly, like you heard this deep voice talking to him, and when you saw, it was the good old Kratos, and he was free. He wasn't shamed by the blades of chaos. Instead, he, he had an ax. And by the looks of it, I could be wrong, that God of War game looks like it's open world, really. Uh, it gave me that feeling. Uh, Kratos, he's training this kid, like I said, and they were, on, they were deer hunting. And uh, you saw like when you gained some experience, and really, it looked like an open world game. I could be wrong, but it felt that way. And of course, it couldn't, uh, it, like a tradition, there was like this big ass, it wasn't even a boss. It was like a sub boss, but I'm sure later it will be like a regular enemy, but it was great. It was awesome. It was God of War. That's the way this guy started the press conference. From moment one, I was speechless. Right now, Hideo Kojima is in the back. Oh my God, I wish he would see me and notice me, but I digress. Later, we saw this trailer. I thought it was The Last of Us 2, but it wasn't. It was a whole new IP, and like this guy was remembering. Like I remember when the world was populated and it had cars and it got trains and it had, you know, like planes and everything and bicycles and whatever and uh, but uh, it just went to the title it's called Days Gone so it wasn't The Last of Us 2 and speaking of last that's like a, the worst segue but we saw like the gigantic animal The Last Guardian yes that game that has been in development hell for what it was 2007 or, or since 2009 well, I'm not sure, but for a freaking long time. Kind of like Duke Nukem forever. But you know, I'm sure this game won't be like that, you know, sucky. So we saw more interactions with the little kid and his pet, if you will. And it looks awesome. And the other thing is that they gave us a release date, October 26th of this very year. Finally, we're gonna have The Last Guardian. Thank God, thank you PlayStation, thank you. <laughs> I'm looking at my nose right now because there's a lot to cover. So I don't know if you guys remember Horizon, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes, we saw a bit of that last year and Carcamo the 40 of Pain was there to cover that. And uh, well, if you don't know, just check it out in my channel. And this game, like I said before, you use that the principal girl, uh, for me it looks of the red head of Mirror's Edge. So the thing is that uh, this world, for some reason, is populated by giant mech beasts. Like really, some look like a kind of a Metal Gear-ish, if you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, they're like, so there's this good beast machines and these bad beast machines and the bad ones corrupt the good ones if that makes sense the thing is that like, she has like a, a whole array of weapons you get into the bullet time she gets into a bull a mechanic bull if you will get out of here she uses materials to create weapons crafting and all that stuff and i forgot to mention this game is open world and you know that's a-okay for me I gotta congratulate every developer, not only PlayStation, because 
everybody is bringing to the table new IPs. And PlayStation is not the exception. By the makers, Quantic Dreams, the developers that did that awesome, underrated game called Indigo Prophecy, go and, you know, go get it or research it or something. And also, Heavy Rain, they bring us this game. And, you know, it's a cinematic game. It looks like a, not film noir, but, you know, you're a detective, but guess what? You're a, you're an android, you're a robot, but you look human, except for some little tiny things that glow uh, on your head. So there's this girl that she's being kidnapped by, you know, by a guy. And uh, the mom is like, why did you hire an android? How could you do this to me? And uh, but, well, yeah, it, it's okay, so the guy goes and he tries to negotiate with the guy that has the girl ransom. And you know what's the kicker? What's the, what a twist? The guy is another android. And if you heard something about the three laws of robots, a robot cannot harm another human. That's one of them. And they have to follow the order of every human, uh, but except that they can't harm another human. So this robot is about to hurt this little girl. The little girl. And um, yeah, he does, he does. So it begs the question, how did this happen? And really, I'm like, yes, I wanna know, I'm intrigued. But it doesn't end, 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 but it doesn't end there because you can see that this game, uh, you make the whole story. You have a lot of choices. They showed us, like, I kid you not, like maybe 10 options, how could the story, uh, who could have, and then because of your choice, like maybe you should get a gun, maybe you should tell the truth, maybe you betray the guy. So this is freaking awesome. And the name of the game is, I forgot, give me a second. The name of the game is Detroit Become Human. Yeah, weird kind of name, but it's okay. So let's move on. I remember back in the day when VR was the shit and everybody was talking about it that was going to be the next thing and do you remember virtual boy and well anyway everybody forget it and nobody cared about vr but you know it's kind of funny because it's trending again vr it's back but now we have the technology now we can build it better and playstation is also in the vr game and uh, we saw this well it wasn't a trailer it was actual gameplay of somebody playing we never saw like the people playing but you know what i mean um and it was all dark, like in the kitchen. And then you saw like, there was this, um, una paila, una olla. I don't know how to say it in English right now, but uh, uh, he lift up, or maybe she, uh, the thing, and it was like all rotting stuff and cockroaches came all everywhere. And it was gross, but it was cool. And uh, at the end, there was more like fucked up imagery. And guess what? Resident Evil, it's Resident Evil on VR. And this is the part that I'm not too sure if I heard this correctly. And if I'm not very much mistaken, um, it's gonna be like the demo. It's gonna be available for the PS uh, Plus users, PlayStation Plus. And uh, we're gonna get that game on October of 2017, right? Yeah. 2017, according to the producer Tommy Gonzalez. This is not a new thing, but VR, it's coming on October. Last time I checked, uh, they were sold out on Amazon, and you know, the freaking scalpers were on eBay, and they want to take advantage of you, but I'm sure they, it will probably be, you know, restocked, so don't worry. So the VR, it's $399, 399 bucks. They say they already are working, and they're gonna have at launch like 50 games. And I think that's like, damn, son. That's a lot. After that, the showcase of VR games started. Well, it already started with Resident Evil, but you know, it kept going. And we got to see how do you drive the inside of an X-Wing in Star Wars Battlefront X-Wing. VR missions. Damn, that's a mouthful.
out of the blue, you heard the voice of the Joker. And I thought like, okay, another Batman game. I don't think it's gonna be VR, but guess what? Yes, we didn't see any gameplay footage, but I'm already, I'm so excited because get to wear the cowl. You get to be Batman and I just, I don't know, my mind is just going places. Like, how are you gonna fight, you know? when you are surrounded by 10, 15 guys, like, oh, oh that's, this is, oh, how's that gonna feel? That's gonna feel awesome, so I can't wait, really. I'm psyched, it's Batman Arkham VR something, but it's coming to PlayStation VR. <laughs> I could just flavor it. Hey, finally I met Craig. Oh, did you? Yeah. Is he wandering around right? Yeah, yeah, I saw him with Brian. Oh, awesome, yeah, do you know where he went? Well, he went that way. That way? Yeah. All right, cool. Hey. Have fun on Hey, shoot. take care, man. Next trailer was you see some footage of the city and you hear this voice of a teenager, kind of whiny, but it seemed familiar. And boom! Spidey! Yes, Spidey is back. Uh, I don't know if it's PlayStation exclusive. I don't think so. But, well, we only saw it on PlayStation on the press conference. But it looked really awesome. Look, the graphics, the way Spidey crashed through the window, the cars exploding, Spidey like, mm, mm. so that was Spider-Man. After that, we saw another game, like a guy in the future in outer space, pew, 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 killing people. I wasn't that excited. I'm sorry, I wasn't, but that's my taste. And guess what? It was Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Yay, I guess. But also we saw a trailer and that looked very familiar. It was the remastered version of Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And you know, that's actually the game I really want. You can you can take you can you can have your infinite warfare, guys. Sorry. We were all trying to breathe because uh, we were breathless. Too many awesome things were happening and I heard another tune, another familiar tune, and it was Crash Bandicoot, and I was like, yay! Finally, freaking finally, as always, what took you so long? And then it comes, and they tell us that it's gonna be Crash Bandicoot 1, Crash Bandicoot 2, and Crash Bandicoot Warp remastered for the PlayStation 4. They didn't give us a release date, but you know, that's something. It's not a new Crash Bandicoot game, but you know, I'm not gonna complain. So, the other rumor that was floating around was Crash Bandicoot as a Skylanders character. And so we saw it and he looked like, well, he looked goofy, uh, more realistic, but I didn't mind. The thing is that I just wanna know when are you guys gonna release the Crash Bandicoot Trilogy remaster. After this, I'm like, okay, these guys can't top themselves. How can you top God of War 4? How can you top The Last Guardian? And then they announce it. One of the biggest creative minds in video game history. My mind knew it. My heart knew it. Hideo freaking Kojima, yes, baby, yes. I'm back. This is awesome, and nobody is helping me. Fuck you, Tommy. So anyway, we got Hideo Kojima, and he was here with a brand new IP. And I was kidding, like, haha, it's gonna be, it's gonna be PT instead. It's gonna be backwards, TP. It's gonna be, it's gonna be Hill Silent. You know, he won't get sued by Konami. And I'm like, chupalo Konami, chupalo Konami in Spanish. Then it started. And we saw this guy naked, like on the beach, and like all these fishes, fishes were dead. And uh, then we saw a little baby, like with an umbilical cord to the guy. It all seemed pretty weird and cryptic, but that's, that's Kojima, man. That's his signature. He's cryptic, he's weird, he's awesome. And uh, then the guy, we see the guy's butt, then he turns around and it's Norman Reedus. Yes, and I'm not sure if this is the game that he's working with Guillermo del Toro, 
but I hope so. And if not, it's still going to be awesome. If Guillermo is in it or he's not in it, it's Kojima. There, you, you can't go wrong, Kojima. You are a lovely Kojima. So Norman Reedus gets up with the baby. He's holding it. He's like, he's about to cry. And then we see a wide shot of, you know, a, a desolated beach with uh, hundreds of thousands of fishes that are dead. And then we see the sky and we see like four things that may might be like, I don't know, alien ships or something. But I don't care, man. That was great. Thank you, man. Thank you. And that wasn't the end. I thought like, okay, they have to end here. This has to be the end. But it wasn't. After that, and finally, they showed us gameplay footage of that game that we all thought it was The Last of Us. Days gone. And uh, so, yes, the, you know, the post-apocalyptic world, like everything was destroyed. This guy that he looks, he was into motorcycles and, you know, he was looking for somebody. And guess what? It's Gollum. Okay, it's not Gollum. It was a zombie. But, and he... It, it bit another friend of his, or maybe it wasn't a friend, uh, the, zomb the zombie, so he was going to kill it. The friend didn't want to die, but it doesn't matter. Later, like a bajillion zombies appears, and I can only compare this with World War Z because it was li literally hundreds of thousands, and you see the guy running around. It was great, like the adrenaline, and I can't wait to play all these games. PlayStation did it. They did it. It's the best press conference uh, of this year. They they just like, you know what, screw it. They didn't give Xbox a chance. At least, come on, let them win this year. But, well, that's my opinion. Like I said, opinions are like assholes. And, you know, get your own asshole because I have mine. And I just have to say this. This is awesome. This is awesome. So your humble servant, Karkamo, the forger of pain, is saying, see you later, alligator, because this is not over. More viewers are coming to Karkamo Gaming. Coin a term for that. Let's say, like, wind punk, if you will. Dishonored 2 is the love child of a threesome.